Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another guide. This time it's for Inara, the Stone Warden. Inara will slide in the OB45 patch, and she is one of the harder champions to play. So without wasting too much time, let's have a quick look at her abilities. Her default attack is called Stone Spear, which will always fire in bursts of 3, unless she gets stunned. Note that each shard does 225 damage, so one ammo will do 625 damage, and the whole clip will do a whopping 3400 damage. Note the weapon does have damage fall off. Her ult fire is not an ult fire at all, it's earth and guard. Lasting for 5 seconds it will make you and your deployables take 30% less damage for the duration. The cooldown is 12 seconds. Now I said deployables and that is her Q ability named impasse. You will build a wall that will last for 5 seconds and it has a total health of 6500. Note this is not a shield, so getting Wrecker will not help you destroy it faster, Bulldozer will. The base cooldown is 15 seconds and this can be changed with her legendary cards. Her F ability is called Warder's Field. Place an obelisk that slows your enemy by 60% and does 150 damage per second. The cooldown is 12 seconds. One thing to note about both deployables are that they won't go into cooldown until both of them are either destroyed by the enemy or cancelled by yourself by recasting the abilities. Her ultimate is called Seismic Crash. After a short delay, you'll throw a stone spear that stuns everyone in a 40 AoE for 2 seconds. What makes this interesting is that this will go through shields. So the only way to counter it is actually if the enemy Inara summons a wall as well. Now, Inara is the first champion that will be released in Season 1, which means just like the others, she will get 3 legendary cards. Now, this makes our lives both easier and harder depending on the way you look at things. So instead of the traditional 3 loadouts, I'll show you 4, 1 for each legendary, which highlight the specific trait, and then 1 hybrid. The legendaries are Mother's Grace, Treacherous Ground, and Tremor. Mother's Grace will give you and your deployables an extra 20% damage reduction, meaning that when you activate Earth and Guard, you will now take 50% reduced damage. Treacherous Ground will give Warder's Field a crippling effect. For those who don't know, cripple is when you can't use the movement ability. This includes Fernando's Charge, Eevee Saw, and Barrack Rocket Boots. Finally, we have Tremor, which will reduce the cooldown of Impasse by 7 seconds, which means you can build a wall every 8 seconds. Let's move on to the loadouts. As I said, I made 4 loadouts which highlight the specific traits of each given legendary. Starting with Tremor. With this loadout and legendary, you will summon a wall every 8 seconds, so you can mitigate a lot of damage. The loadout therefore is Plateau 4, Cloudbreaker 2, Sacred Ground 2, Steadfast 2, and Summit 1. Quickly explaining the cards, Plateau and Cloudbreaker will make your wall last longer and make it tankier. Sacred Ground will make it so you get reduced damage when you place down Warder's Field and when you stand in it. Summit will make you bounce in the air if you wall yourself up. More on that later. And Steadfast will increase your health pool. So basically, clever use of walls, which means you can block parts, damage mitigation, or just shenanigans. The wall cooldown will literally be halved, so you can get away with a lot of things and bad walling. Next, we have the legendary loadout for Mother's Grace. This will make you and deployables take 20% less damage, which means 50% in total. So the idea with this loadout is to stay alive as long as possible. The loadout therefore is Stone Bulwark 3, Sacred Ground 2, Shear 3, Whetstone 2 and Crag 2. Damage reduction from every ability plus heal yourself a little bit when you use Earth and Guard. Whetstone and Shear are added to give you DPS when you go in your defensive state. The last legendary loadout is for Treacherous Grounds, which will cripple anyone in the vicinity of Warder's Field. So the loadout will be Standing Stones 4, Sacred Grounds 4, Lodestone 2, Summit 1 and Crag 1. We get the max cooldown reduction for Warder's Field, which now becomes 8 seconds. When you summon a wall or Warder's Field, this will give you bonus damage reduction. A Lodestone gives you 2 ammo, so means 6 shots in total if you activate Warder's Field, and Summit can be used as a positioning tool. Finally, we have the hybrid deck, which I normally run, and any legendary here is fine, but I prefer Impasse. The loadout is Summit 1, Cloudbreaker 4, Sacred Ground 2, Standing Stones 4, and Whetstone 1. So we use the reduced cooldown on Warder's Field and we make our walls stronger. Eliminations help you increase the DPS and Summit 1 is for fun and positioning. Now, items. It should be pretty straightforward. She is quite tanky and has some very long cooldowns on all of her abilities. So Kronos first pick up, because as we have said before, the longer the cooldown of an ability, the more efficient Kronos becomes. You will be in the fight a lot and constantly moving and summoning walls, or Wallace Field, or whatever takes your fancy. 
So you can choose either Haven or Blast Shield, and of course you pick up Kill to Heal over Life Rep. Even though your DPS is good, it's unreliable. If you have a healer on your team, then Rejuvenate is also a great choice. The unique thing about Inara is that she doesn't have any movement ability or movement cards, so she will always be the same speed unless you get nimble. So remember when I said we should summit in our loadouts? This will be used as a positioning tool. When you knock yourself up in the air, that's the perfect time to use your ultimate, because you are suspended in the air when you're casting your ultimate. Of course at this point you are super vulnerable, and but that is a completely different story. Inara has a few combos, so here's my attempt to chase. You can play down water's field behind your wall, so it will still affect the enemies on the other side. So place down your wall and then the water field behind it. If you're just beginning a team fight, place down your wall first, then water field, then activate Earth and Guard immediately after cancelling your wall. Second scenario, if you're escaping on low health, you can place down a wall behind you to throw enemies off guard. Another variation could be you place on water's field, then a wall, if you really don't want them to chase you because it's slowed down and they can't get to you. If you want style points, then combine the above and use summit in a loadout. When you place the wall just in front of you while moving, you will bounce in the air. And there we have it. Four loadouts for you to try and get inspired from. You don't have to copy these loadouts if they don't work for you. Depending on which legendary you have unlocked, will also decide your Inara playstyle. Ultimately, you need to learn from these guides, consider your own playstyles, and make your own unique loadouts. This is why I do this, to educate you players. For now, however, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, remember to give it a thumbs up, and for more content like this, remember to subscribe as well. I will see you all in the realm.